class. Without his presence, you're going to have to guy, guy step up. Mitchell Smith now inserted into the starting lineup. He's not the same type of player, but can he have the energy and the impact? We'll see. He shall see. The guards have to be critical and smart with the ball. Smith is an Arkansas native, former Van Buren pointer, and he's getting a start inside for Mizzou, although he'll guard Justin Smith to start things out. Arkansas coming off of a Tuesday win on the road at Kentucky. Huge win at Rupp as Moody gets a leaner. And one of the top scoring freshmen in the country is on the board. You see the change in Missouri's lineup with Mitchell Smith in there at the five. A Tigers team coming off of a disappointing performance on the road against Ole Miss after moving into the nation's top ten. Tom, you say disappointing is right, but it's one of the more shocking performances for Missouri. And Conzo Martin told us before the game, he's, you know, when you're the target, you got a target on your back, you're in the top ten, you got to bring it every night. And it was clear they didn't. Defensively, their communication wasn't good, their switching wasn't good, their, their help defense on ball screens in particular was not good, and Ole Miss took them apart. So that's where this team is built. They've got to start things on the defensive end, not a great first possession, giving Moody an easy shot, but a set, better second one there. Drew Smith with the pump fake and drops it in, coming off of a 17-point performance. He's in double figures for nine consecutive games. Big tear for the senior from Evansville, Indiana. Trying to get a high low into Connor Van over 7-3, folks. He's got Xavier Pinson, the point guard on him. They've got to get him a touch inside. Pinson stands just 6-2. Smith switches over to him, and a floater goes for Moses Moody. In the end, too easy. Moody be able to get right downhill into the lane. He's projected to be a lottery pick, folks. Six six, silky smooth, can knock down shots, learning to better to play without the ball and play in spacing. But right now he's had two really good, easy looks and drives down Bravo. Good response by Mitchell Smith. Mitchell Smith knocks down the three, 19% on the season. Played just 14 minutes in Missouri's loss at Oxford against the Rebels. Nice pass inside. Oh, a miss from the bunny angle by Justin Smith, the Indiana transfer. Pull up. Off the mark. Three ball is an air ball, and then a step on the inline by Kobe Brown will give it to Arkansas. Eric Musselman didn't stick around for the entirety of the last matchup between these two at Bud Walton Arena. Got ejected in the second half, second season as Arkansas's head coach. He's got history with Conzo Martin. Goes back 25 years. Give away, take away, whatever you want to call it. Pinch and slams it all. Love how you said didn't stick around. Make it sound like he went to get a bite to eat. He got an early shower. He wasn't too happy. Double text late in the game. And the, the, the officiating there left something to be desired at times. But ultimately, I think he was just frustrated with his team more than anything else. Missouri outplayed them thoroughly. Pulled a Norman Dale. Oh, look at that. Was Shooter there? <laughs> Shooter might have been there. Eric Musselman, by the way, broke into professional basketball as a youngster. And he was both the GM and the head coach of the Florida Beach Dogs in West Palm Beach back in the mid-90s. They had a couple of Mizzou guys, Doug Smith, Javon Crudup. And they were playing the Grand Rapids Mackers, who are their top three-point shooters. A, guy, a kid by the name of Conzo Martin, in between stints in the NBA. Conzo's like, man, I'd never heard a coach talk trash to me before until I got to the CBA, and Eric Musselman was on the sideline. That was funny. I was a few minutes late to the call. I pride myself on being punctual, but I was in the studio trying to figure some stuff out. So I come in a couple minutes in, and coach is talking about a coach talking trash to him. And I almost said in jest, are we talking about Mus here? Said, yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. Oh, interesting. Mitchell Smith gets a couple of threes. Eric Musselman was as energetic as a GM as you could imagine in the CBA. Dallin, we got the job. His first day on the job, he made four trades. <laughs> it's like, it's like a, a like fantasy a, team. That's like a video game. So you get in the video game right away and start making moves. Desi Sills gives it up. He's been less than productive lately. Shot clock winding down. It's at three now. And a corner three. Justin Smith off the mark. Missouri not afraid to push. The SEC is the fastest conference by Temple among all the major conferences, second overall only to the MIA. 
deep three. Mismatch. Yeah. Connor Vanover gets 7 3 out there. Three taken there by Mark Smith. Can't get it to go. Missouri with an early 10 4 advantage, looking for a serious sweep in this fun, fun, historic series. 20 to 16 final. Afterwards, Nolan Richardson said, we won't play that good again. Missouri was not a very good basketball team tonight, but I think they will be. Sometimes the buzzsaw hits you. Arkansas, of course, would go on to win a national title. Missouri would bounce back. It would go undefeated in Big 8 play. I mean, my ears aren't the best. I think you said 1950s when you meant 1990s. I know it was SD video, but that would, that, that would have been amazing. I was showing it all out there. The series started in 1950. Ah, there we go. That I'm was, slow. That was one of the notable ones. Moody with the personal foul. It was also notable when Mike Anderson left Missouri to go back to Fayetteville, where he was an assistant under Nolan Richardson. Arkansas leads the all-time series by two. These two border rivals. Parker Brown into the game for Missouri. Tigers trying to fill the void without Jeremiah Tillman. Taking a leave of absence from the team due to a death in the family. Feel for that young man, no, uh, no doubt about it, what uh, he and his family are going through. And uh, Conta Martin and his guys are trying to go out there and fight in his behalf and get a win here, an important win coming off that loss over Ole Miss uh, in Tillman's stead. Makes it tough, tougher. He's one of the most, if not the most improved player in the country, in all honesty. Uh, he's been outstanding in these games in the SEC. To play without him tonight, obviously with a heavy heart, without him on the court hurts the team. That's the freshman Moody with the bucket. Missouri was announced today one of the top 16 seeds as of today for the NCAA tournament. In fact, they're number 16, and Joe Lenardi says they need to win here today to stay on that four line. Here's a look at the bracket preview released today. Be in the same region as number one seed Michigan. Wolverines on a pause right now. What else jumped out at you, Dallin, when you saw the top 16 release? Uh, obviously, the Big Ten, you got two number one seeds in Michigan and Ohio State. You got Illinois in there. I mean, the, the Big Ten has been the best conference in the country without a doubt, and it's reflected in those top 16. Uh, also, the absence of the ACC. I mean, UVA's in there, but UVA plays North Carolina coming up on ESPN here at 6 o'clock. And if they don't win that, without a doubt, I think UVA falls off that. So the ACC is, is down relative to its past success as well. Let's look at Joe Lenardi's bracketology by conference. Come from behind win in overtime last night for Illinois at Nebraska. The Illinois win reminds, uh, remains one of the key wins from Missouri. Also one on the road against Oregon. Pinson off the mark. Now, where is Arkansas at its best offensively? When they're playing fast, when they want to get up and down, and they can play at a number one tempo in the SEC, and as you mentioned, this conference likes to play fast. But when they're playing downhill, balls in Moody's hands, they're driving, they're kicking, uh, and playing together. That's when they are, they are at their best. That's what, you know, Missouri wants to make this a half-court game on the defensive end. They want to get out and run themselves. Uh, as you mentioned, both teams aren't scared to push the ball, but if you can grind the other opponent into a half-court game, you've done half the battle. Pickett misses from the corner. Previous foul was on Moody, was his second, so he'll take a seat for a moment. Three ball off the front and off the mark from Desi Sills, who's just two for his last 13 from deep. That's really, I mean, Sills has got to be better. He and Vanover were climbed from one for 21 in the first meeting, but with, with Moody getting a second foul already, he's been the offense. He's got all seven points for him right now. He's come out very aggressive. He's able to get into the lane and finish twice, knock down a three. This guy's going to be a potential lottery pick, folks. And you see him right now with two quick fouls, a freshman. The question is, how long do you sit him? I don't know if in a game like this you need him that much, but it would be an experience. If you can sit him the remaining 13-30 this half, you've got to see how things go. But if it becomes a double-digit lead or Arkansas can't hold on in some regard, you've got to think about getting him back in the game, just how critical he is offensively to them night in and night out, but particularly how he started this game. Arkansas turning it over four in the last four-plus minutes. They get a clean look inside, and it rattles home for Sills. Nice cut by Sills, and Mark Smith just losing sight of his man. Cut right behind him, and a good drop-off by Jalen Williams, the freshman. Tigers have missed their last five field goal attempts. Mark Smith. 
picks up the blocking foul. Another one on the Razorbacks will be Jalen Williams. Basic basketball. Your man loses sight of you. Cut behind him. Great job by Sills. Good delivery by Williams. And they're going to need to play together. Missouri is a very good defensive team when it is in the half court. So you've got to be able to play off each other, play together. And they do get up in you a little bit. Don't let the pressure bother you. And, and, and take care of the ball. Sills is the guy that when he's playing well, and J.D. Note in particular, when they're making shots, this Razorback team can beat anybody in the country. Uh, but when they're not, they can lose to anybody in the country. Sills suffered a shoulder injury. A couple of weeks ago It looked like he's playing with a whole lot of confidence at this time of the season for Arkansas Two bugs on the floor now running the point Torrance Watson has joined him in the backcourt Conzo Mark going deep to his bench early Shot clock is at two Mitchell Smith gives it back and unaware a shot clock violation on Mizzou Doesn't usually happen with such an experienced team like Missouri in the top ten in the nation six in the nation exactly in terms of experience Average two and a half years of collegiate experience on this team to not know the shot clock is kind of a, a brain freeze by everybody You don't usually see that Williams gives it up Smith kicks it back out here Sills now with the drive Another extra pass and Sills shuffled his feet an Arkansas turnover, the fifth of the game for the Razorbacks. That was a heck of a defensive possession. Just, an, I mean, a big scramble situation. Number of guys closing out, helping, recovering, back and forth through the uh, through the possession. That's what they didn't have against Ole Miss. Ole Miss was able to get to the spots they wanted in just one action, one ball reversal. They were able to get in the lane, get an open three. This was, it was the game came so easy. That was an outstanding possession of, of multiple efforts, consistently forcing a turnover in the end. Bugs penetrates, poked away from behind by J.D. Note. Sloppy game early. Five turnovers for the Hogs. You mentioned four now for the Tigers. Oh, An air ball from Note. Will you promise me the game will get prettier when we return? Yes, I do, Tom. And I have all control. Five hour energy. conference because in their non conference, they didn't have they didn't beat one team that's going to be in the NCAA tournament. So you have to go out there and prove that you're a tournament team within league play. I think they're without a doubt they are when you watch the play, but when you look around the rest of the country, they have to win some of these games. This being a huge opportunity, road win, this would be their their marquee win if they could get it done right now on the road against Missouri team that's currently by the, S by the NCAA fourth, a four seed, the 16th overall seed in the tournament as they turn it over again. Turnover number six for Missouri. Oddly enough, the road win at Rupp Arena is not, as of now, a quad one win. Now, that could change, obviously, if Kentucky can get from today 81 to the a move up to the top 75. Maybe that helps with a, a win against Auburn today. We'll wait and see. Reach from behind and a takeaway by Bugs, a Hawaii transfer. Pardon me, Drew Smith, excuse me. And Smith fouled on his way in. It's great hands by Smith, and he'll do this a lot. If you turn your back to him, he used to play with a bunch of guards, love that pickpocket. Cookies! We go in the other way now. And he gets himself to the free throw line. Cookies! That, cookies! You always say when you pick somebody's pocket, <laughs> let him know what's up. <laughs> Took his cookies. Drew Smith, last year led the SEC with silver two steals a game. Second in school history behind... Former Tigers, Stephon Hanna. Second in the league in free throw percentage. Got a couple coming here. Missouri's loss at Ole Miss wasn't just disappointing. It was, it was ugly. They went just 5 of 15 from the free throw line. That was a single game worse in the last 25 years for the Tigers. Like I said before, it was that was shocking. I mean, that, that's hard to do to go five to fifteen from the free throw line. Um, but their effort was was surprising. They just didn't reflect their program or their coach Conzo Martin how they're going to play and how they've got to this point. Credit though, Kermit Davis's team, Ole Miss, was dominant in that game. They played with great energy. They played together. They made shots. Schuler was good. KJ Buffett getting back into the mix and playing well. So that that was a outstanding win for Ole Miss. 
and one of the more surprising results you're going to see in the SEC this year. If they lose the game 80-79, that's not that shocking. But to get blown out and never really even compete, that was the surprising part. Long two falls out. Here's Drew Smith to push for Missouri. Gonzo Martin has embraced tempo this season. They're running more this year than they have in the previous 12 years as Gonzo's time as a head coach. He's averaged 294 in tempo's first three seasons at Missouri. That number drastically faster this season. You saw that last possession there, Tom. They, they doubled Pinson in the corner. They ran two out. Here's another double coming. They're trying to force Missouri to make some decisions, speed them up a bit. But when you do it a little haphazard like that, a great read and kick opposite uh, by, by, I think that was Brown in the corner, by the, on the uh, block of the kick out. Tough two. Goldie Brown with the rebound, went down with it, and we got to jump off. Possession will go to Missouri. Coming up, 6 Eastern over on ESPN in the app, number 9, Virginia. Winners of 10 of their last 11. Play host of 12 and 6, North Carolina in Charlottesville. Virginia's won six straight against Carolina, the longest such streak since they won eight consecutive when that series began in 1911. Ooh. The Woodrow Wilson administration what was going on back then. <laughs> Pre World War One. You're in charge of all of the uh, poli sci history today. Noted. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Torrance Watson hit a big three last time down. Now Pinson with the answer. Without Moody in this game, they've scored two points. It was on a great cut, but they have struggled offensively now. And it's almost a question of where do we go, who are we playing through, what are we doing? As Williams forces it up, he'll get a foul call. But as they've struggled offensively, on the other side, the Tigers' last two possessions have looked quite fluid. This one just a, just a simple overhelp. You know, Davis, the freshman, you don't need to help in that gap that long. Start moving back to Pinson. Pinson's their leading scorer. You know, he's not lighting it on fire in terms of three-point shooting, 32%, but you know we can make it. So you need to start to move with the ball, move back towards your guy, and get out of that gap. Mitchell Smith picked up his second. He's going to stay in the game for now. And Jalen Williams at the free throw line, and now Mitchell will come out. Conzo's two-foul participation is at less than 10%. That means when a guy picks up his second, they play less than 10% of the remaining minutes and a half. The Division One average is 23%. So that illustrates Conzo much more conservative when it comes to foul issues, especially so today without the services of Tillman. Big offensive rebound. When you're struggling to score, you got to manufacture baskets. Now oh, okay. one right there. Good pass by Williams. Good throw down by Tate. Who was the hero of that UK, that Kentucky game? Get the offensive rebound, the last possession, making both free throws. That showed some uh, some onions, as Raf would say, on the line, yeah. the game on the line. Knocked the free throws down with four seconds to go. He seemed surprised that last possession he was so wide open. Parker Brown up close to personal. Brother plays at Kansas. First and only duel that I'm aware of, besides the Rush brothers, where two brothers play for the rivals. What are open the three in that situation? What, what are we doing with that one? Tate with the three. Well, you know how mom handled it. Mom Lisa played college basketball at Missouri. She was a fine player. Her brother Mike Tamboldi was also a good Mizzou player. So when uh, when brother moved into his dorm in Lawrence, she snuck a Mizzou t-shirt into his dresser and just left it there. Here's Torrance Watson. Got it! Second three for Watson. Played for Mike Pazzo at Whitfield in St. Louis. Great program. And Torrance showing his stroke here tonight. And Watson coming in looking to hunt threes. 13 of his 15 shots coming to this game at three-pointers. So he's coming in looking to knock him down. And he got his feet set. Good, quick reversal ball. Stepping in and knock it down. Good answer on the other side, though, by the Hawks. Jalen Tate, the transfer from Northern Kentucky with the bucket. Arkansas hanging there, down by five. Missouri's had a pair of 8 nothing runs in this game. Here's Pinson. Wow. Missouri from team. Tigers have hit 6 of 11. This lineup for Mizzou, they can score.
switch a lot of the screening action if need be. They need at the top of the key guard to guard. Brown helped a little bit, had to recover. Back up to the test. He wanted the game to pick up a little Justin bit here, Tom. Smith. Danny Fortson was a guy that wasn't going to play for us. We met with him early in the season and said, hey, you know, we're probably going to trade you. We, we appreciate what you do, but you don't fit. He goes, it's like game 16 of the season. We're in Denver to play the Nuggets. Pre-game, I got nothing. And Fortson says, no, no, no. No, we need the speech, man. We're not leaving the locker room until you motivate us. And he's like, I, I didn't. Eric Musselman was saying, I didn't know the guys really, it meant that much that it resonated with him. But he got a guy like Danny Fortson who, you know, was on his way out the door, and he was motivated by it. And it seems to work. That, that the funny thing about it is, A, I mean, 82 games in the NBA, that's a lot of ideas. That's a lot of creativity you got to keep coming up with. The things you got to keep coming up with, as he said, which is kind of why he thought maybe he could get away with not doing a day. But it really does resonate with guys. I think it's interesting he pointed out to one, saying one of their keys in the game was get back. So they started playing ludicrous, get back. <laughs> now, in, in, in all honesty, not the best song in the world, but it has a pretty simple message. And I think he said the guys remember that and they take that on the court. That's what coaching and teaching is. Can you tell tell me one thing in this moment and then I carry it forward for the next 10 minutes, 30 minutes, two hours if need be, and keep it in mind? That's what the whole thing is about. The UPS one, hilarious. But it was about delivering defensive rebounds. They dominated on the glass that game. You got to have your message cut through. They had another one at Vandy. He said, don't don't fall for the trap. Don't, don't chase the cheese and they had taped slices of cheese under every player's seat mm, that must have smelled good yeah yeah i don't know what kind i hope that they didn't want doing crumbly blue cheese that would be ugly Oof. missouri with the turnover tigers with a nine point lead i wonder what his message would have been today well it's interesting this is something without jeremiah tillman in the game before the game we talked a lot about jeremiah tillman all the, the, the screen and dives he had, the, the rim runs, and how Dutchie dominated that first game. So I imagine the message was a lot about physicality, meeting Tillman, finding that battle as the, the bigs, but the whole team matching that physical battle led by Tillman. He doesn't play. And if you're just joining us, you see Tate go to the 10 and draw a foul. He doesn't play horrible news, a, a death in the family. So he's not part of this game, Jeremiah Tillman, one of the most approved players in the country, coming off 25 and 11 last time these two teams played. And the weird thing is, Tom, when you're on the, when you're warming up, and you may not know that one of the best players is not going to play in the game. You don't may not know that he's not down there. But then assistant coach, usually when I was playing, I feel like an assistant coach would start. It won't be like a rumble. You start here. Hey, I haven't seen, I haven't seen X yet. I haven't seen them yet. One of the best players. And you begin to kind of mentally, you can't get in the thought that this game's going to be easier or different. You have to continue to believe that it's going to be the same battle, the same fight even forward, even without one of somebody else's best players. So Coach Muss, I'm sure, had a bit of a mental battle to make sure his guys were just as much locked in, whether Tillman's playing in this game or not. Let's watch who comes out after making a couple of threes. Game of adjustments, perhaps more so this season than any other. Another free throw coming for Devontae Davis. Goes by Devo. Part of this incredible freshman class. Number five recruiting class in the country. Includes four four stars. All from the state of Arkansas. Got to win your home state recruiting battles. They did that. It's a, a very good class. And a couple with a bunch of very good transfers. But you got to bring this whole group together and mold them. They're 337th in the nation in minutes continuity from year to year. That's bottom 20. Um, so that's part of part of how Coach Musselman has built his teams, transfers, but also now he's got these really talented freshmen. You got to put it all together. See the colorful shirt Conzo Martin's wearing, the rally for Ryan logo on the front. It's been an emotional series over the years. Ryan Luce, now in fourth grade, daughter of Missouri former assistant coach and battling neuroblastoma. Cancer is in remission. And they've not only raised hundreds of thousands of dollars in her honor, but they've also put together a five-game win streak in this annual game. Drew Smith got hit in the face on that ball fake, and Arkansas with the takeaway turns into a two-on-one. And the end result is a foul on Xavier Pinson. Let's see if Smith's okay. You never want to see a guy take a shot like that. Take another look as he tried to get downhill, and Tate just... Incidental, but I'm, I mean he took a shot and people aren't gonna like that. I say this, but I'm just gonna say it anyway 
you still have to complete the play. You, you can't just turn and throw it to nobody. Now you, they're going two points the other way, potentially three points. I know it might hurt a lot, but they're in the same position. You have to gut it out and find a way to make the right play just to carry on the possession. You cannot just see possession in a game like that. So on the other side, Justin Smith gets his first point of the game. Came in averaging 11 points a game. Transferred in from Indiana. You mentioned at the outset, this is a different Arkansas team with them. They're better shooting team by 8%. Three more assists per game when Justin Smith is on the floor. And most importantly, a better winning percentage. Here's Kobe Brown. Hasn't scored yet. Missouri's made threes this game without telling they've taken a lot more threes before going inside out. They can't fall in love with the three early on. They still want to get penetration off the bounce with the pass into the lane, get guys collecting it together, and then kick out and play through those closeout situations or getting open shots that way. 60% of their attempts have come from three. The drive. And Drew Bugs will go to the free throw line on the foul. Not usually relied on as a big scoring option. Second on Jalen Williams. And a great job again by spacing the floor. And there was a closeout situation. Couldn't quite get it, but Williams was coming running from this help at the top of the key. And now, great job by Bugs to attack that big, too. A big making a closeout, a long closeout at that to attack and get in the lane, get to the free throw line. And that is quite a friendly roll he got there, too. Now, 8 of 12 from the free throw line for Bugs. 68 consecutive starts at Hawaii. Snow on the ground in Columbia. Uh, not the case in Maui. No, not. One Just hearing you say the word Maui hurts my heart a little bit. It kind of pains me. <laughs> what do you, how much snow you got in the ground in Connecticut? They're like 18 inches out there. And now it's frozen <laughs> solid. It's a complete. We live in a tundra. I know champagne problems, but we live in a tundra. You need an NFL Films narrator, John Vicenna, to talk about the frozen tundra of Connecticut. He'd make, he'd make it sound a lot better. We'd probably have some images of people breathing outside, seeing their breath, and it would look great. Off the baseline, out of bounds. Arkansas down six now. They missed their last six field goal attempts. Make it seven. And then Jalen Williams... Gets whistled for the foul, and he's suddenly got three. They're in some foul trouble. He's got three. Justin Smith's got two. Moses Moody's got two. Smith and Moody, really, they're two most critical guys in this game and on this team night in and night out. They each have two. And now Williams, who's given really good minutes, is going to go to the sideline as well. We'll see what they do lineup wise. Because Vanover hasn't been on the seven foot three. Connor Vanover has not been much of a factor in this game because a lot of times Missouri's been playing five guys with Brown and Mitchell Smith or combinations of others that, that can step out, knock down threes, and keep Vanover on the perimeter, which makes it a little harder sometimes for him to guard. Kobe Brown's got another one coming his way. Came in at just 50% from the free throw line. Lives up to his numbers. Note hasn't scored in this one. He had 19 in the previous matchup with Missouri. A Tigers win at Bud Walton. Sills got a bump. Mark Smith's first. 29 22, Missouri. The ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. 78%. I'm not good at math. I was told there'd be no math. But I believe 78% is really stinking good. And you can't win a game when a team shoots that against you. Desi Sills did not have a great shooting game. First time these teams met, he went 1 for 10. He and Vanover combined to go 1 for 21 in Missouri's win. And now Sills... The guy talking with Eric Musselman, he said, listen, if, if he's going to be on the floor, he's got to be able to knock down some shots for us. And he's going to need to knock down shots. Again, Moses Moody's in foul trouble, Justin Smith in foul trouble for Arkansas, and Xavier Pinson's in foul trouble for Missouri. So the quote-unquote role players, great pick and slip and roll into the block there by Brown and turn and finish. It's, got, it's been necessary right now. Missouri's veteran guys have stepped up a little bit more consistently 
Arkansas struggled, especially the first four or five minutes as soon as Moody went out in the first five minutes of the game. Moody on the bench with two fouls. Jetson Smith also on the bench with two. And so Desi Sills getting busy. He's got a half dozen now. That's just the offense being a little better than the defense. That was great defense, great multiple efforts. Again, communication, closeouts, and bugs was 1v1 with Sills. And Sills just won the battle. Tough finish. Bugs not a great shooter. Drives and gives it up. Kobe Brown down the lane. And that'll be an offensive foul on Missouri's Kobe Brown. That was like a slow motion train wreck. You could see it happening as soon as he went right there. You could see Sills was going to slide over. He does have his feet there, but he's almost on the way down. I don't love that call, but it is what it is. It's the right call, by the way. 10 Missouri turnovers in this first half. Hogs have turned those into nine points and ooh, chance for 11. In among the trees. And we got a three second violation. When I'm talking multiple efforts there, this is the second time Sills has had a great back cut and a great pass. But Pickett finds a way to, to erase that. You know, this is a, a good cut. Pickett lost him a little screening action, but he comes back in, gets a block, and now because they all converge on the ball, three-second call in the lane. So this, he's not allowing one bad play to, to affect you defensively, to find a way to make up for it and have and your teammates that are there to have your back. Corner three, and that one nowhere near as Tate closed down on him. Man, Missouri Tate's started got, the game. Tate's got closing speed like Deion Sanders. He's got the length. Like he, that shot should have been able to get up. And most times they helped off a, a strong side corner shooter. I was about to say they got to stop over helping. But hey, Tate, I couldn't do stuff like that. So I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, go for it. Played for Darren Horn at Northern Kentucky before transferring in. Not just a great recruiting class, but a great transfer class as well for Arkansas. Why not jack it in if you're Vance Jackson? Jackson, very casual guys three for Jackson, but he's coming and looking to looking to hunt threes as well I mean 56 of his 85 shots are threes. That's almost 66 percent. So he comes in looking to get shots up Hit four in the opener against Mississippi Valley State Arkansas Put a bevy of points on the board first game of the season they won 142 to 62 They hit the century mark again Mid-December and a win against Central Arkansas. Nice use of Bevy, by the way. Well done. Yeah, I used Jermaine in my tweet last night. Are you kidding me? That was strong. It was a great tease. There were so many. It was such a good tease of my brother. Of course, because he's not, he's not Jermaine to the social media platform that is Twitter. <laughs> Text me about how great your tweet was in terms of teasing all these random things. Like I don't even know what the heck's going to be in this game. Danny Fortson, UPS, toilet bowls. So, but Jermaine was in the tweet. I said, hey, of all things. Good uses of that word. Yeah, not Joe Jermaine or Jermaine Jackson, but relative to this game, Vance Jackson off the mark, rebound of Mark Smith. 90 seconds before the half. Hogs have made this two of their last 10. I said Jermaine Jackson, I wanted to sing, I'll be there, but I don't want to give the company any some rights issues, so I'll just. Yeah, fill please out on don't. Because that. that would be the biggest concern. Exactly. I can just let it belt it out. Vance Jackson, very comfortable putting it up. This is last two. Mark Smith fouled. And that'll be the first on Vance Jackson. Talk about the SEC and their willingness to run. Well, Wednesday on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. We've got a college basketball doubleheader. Starts at 7 Eastern. Kentucky takes on Scotty Pippen Jr. and Bandy. Wildcats won a thriller against the Doors back on January 5th. Then Texas A&M plays host to number 11, Alabama. Crimson Tide with a three-and-a-half game lead in the SEC, looking to win the first regular season title since 2002. Have you, uh, your opinion of Alabama changed over the last couple of weeks? They've been dealing with some injuries. No, and that's partially because of the injuries and sometimes the schedule and some of the quality of points they play. Um, and I think Herb Jones, the SEC Player of the Year in my mind, but he's, him at full strength is different. Uh, Jordan Bruner makes them more difficult to guard, the grad transfer from Yale. Um, so him being able to get back in the lineup, I think, helps give them more depth and just more talent in terms of 
They have five guys on the court that can dribble, pass, and shoot. That sounds like to people are like, okay, doesn't everybody? No. Almost 99% of teams do not have that. So having those guys out there is important. Bruner's a little bit more skilled than Reese is, who's kind of filled up a lot of his minutes when he's been out. So I still think Alabama's final throw good when they have their full complement of players. Great cut and finish. The picket was wide open. So Missouri with a four-point lead now. Eddie Note coming off of a possession that ended with his first bucket of the game. Trying to find space. Couldn't get the clearance. Shot clock off for Missouri, and Bugs will walk it up. Tigers have really done well when the ball does get in the paint off the bounce of still maintaining and defending people inside out. They've been effective. Shooter Torrance Watson, zero bottom right corner. He's knocked down both of his three point attempts in this one. Here's Brown. Good passer from the elbow. Drew Smith with four, left it short. Loose ball. One on the clock. Watson will fire. And just short at the end of the half. Pinson. Again, playing without Tillman. Pynchon had 23 in the first matchup with these teams. Most of those came at the free throw line. Meanwhile, Justin Smith, only two points on a couple of free throws in the first half. Mitchell Smith starting in Tillman's spot, knocks it out of bounds. That like that went right to Moody off that, that, that inbounds play. Came off a down, so a ball, a, a screen on the side there. And Drew Smith tried to shortcut it. He didn't stay on Moody's body. And Moody got a good look off. Smith's got to be smarter, smarter. I think stay tight to that body of Moody. Don't let him get so much airspace because he can absolutely knock that one down. It's a good look for him. Mark Smith into the paint. Mitchell Smith hit a couple threes in the first half. Obi Brown on the block working on Justin Smith. Like Connor Van over limited, sorry, Dallin, limited minutes in the first half. A seven foot three sophomore is back on the floor for Arkansas. See, he has a mismatch with Drew Smith, almost a foot taller than him, and, and pushed off the block and just reverses it. But a nice shot there by Smith on the other side, finally getting going here. He had a rough, a quieter first half for Justin Smith. I was surprised, as key as Justin Smith is to this Arkansas team, I was surprised he didn't get more touches in the first half. I mean, two he had a couple attempts. Yeah, a couple fouls for him, too, is never what you want to see. He had two fouls as well. So the foul trouble has played a factor for both these teams. And see how Smith, what he could do to get into the flow of the game. But a lot of times he manufactures offense off the glass. So he's a good reverser of the ball. And he can dive down and make a play uh, with the, if they help off people. Uh, he doesn't usually need the plays run for him. He manufactures his own offense through the team. Jalen Tate with the bucket. We're tied. Arkansas hasn't led since it was a 4-2 to two game. A minute and a half in. Have a chance to reclaim the lead here. 12th turnover from Mizzou. A lot of times these turnovers have been just not forced. They've been just kind of lackadaisical with the ball at times. It's hurt. Jalen Tate having a full-blown conversation with Joe Lindsay as he comes over to inbound the ball. There's Van Over, and that's a high percentage look. Off that exchange between Van Over and, and Davis, they got a switch. Davis was able to drive Brown the big, and they had to help good find to find Van Over underneath it. First lead since. 18-28 mark of the first half for Arkansas. Kobe Brown ties it back up. Good strong move that time. Earlier in the half, he shot a little kind of fadeaway hook. This time he went right into the chest of Justin Smith, put his shoulder in there, put him in jail. Good finish by Van Over. Good hands, 7-3, good feet to roll and catch that thing and then reverse it. Very, he has a great touch around the basket. Of course, he could knock down threes, too. Brown will drive. Shares it. Mark Smith. Arkansas trying to add to its lead. Tate from the baseline. And now Pinson will push. Three on two. The lob. And Vanover commits the foul. It's 
see this little handoff, so they switch. Now Davis has the big, he drives him. Mark Smith helps off. Just too easy. When you help up a hill like that, Vanover's going to be wide open in here. Just pick and roll. Good control underneath. Poise. Get the reverse with the touch. Kobe Brown out of Huntsville, Alabama. Played for his dad at Lee High School. Another free throw coming for the sophomore. Hogs bit four out of six this half. Make it five out of seven. Take the take. Ball screen defense from Missouri has been very bad this first half. It looks almost like Old Miss did the other day, where they were able to get that ball screen and get right downhill. There's no uh, no action on the screener to the screener to the ball handler to make him retreat. The roll men have been open. The rotations have been slow. It's not been connected. Drew Smith for Mizzou. Man over off to the screen. How is Missouri's ball screen defense in the first half relative to what they're doing now? It was much better. Then. First of all, they weren't, it was, they weren't as easily screened by the guy on the ball. Secondly, the bigs were helping better and they were beating rotation. They did a great job in the first half of helping the helper, rotating, scramble situations. Everybody kind of working together. They just seemed very disjointed. A simple ball screen is allowing the ball handler to get into the lane and then create for himself or his teammates way too easy. There has to be resistance. If, you, if you're going to center field it, as they say, where you don't jump out and hedge and make them retreat, you've got to actually wall up and not allow them to get downhill. That's not happening and there's no rotation behind it. Brown late to get to Vanover. He's got his first three of the game. He's 32% from deep. But certainly on the scouting report, Pinson turns the corner. Vanover with the rejection. A couple of five block games for the 7 3 sophomore transfer from Cal, including five and one half against Oklahoma State. He was real quiet in the first half, didn't really fit into what was going on with where. Missouri was going small, but he's been outstanding. Great block there. We know he can do that, but he's picking and popping, making threes, picking and rolling and making layups, uh, finding himself free on drives. He's been outstanding in the first four minutes of this half. He'll change the game. An answer from Xavier Pitts in his third three of the game. He had eight threes in Missouri's dramatic win against TCU, part of the SEC Big 12 Challenge a couple weeks ago. That game was bananas, and he was outstanding in it. Well, he just picked up his third. Foul trouble will impact Missouri the rest of the way. Arkansas by one. Streaks of nine games, 11 games, and five games. And won in overtime a couple of times. And uh, the Loose family is at home in Columbia today. Dad Brad is now an assistant athletic director. It's contracted COVID, so contact tracing, they couldn't come to the game, but he had a video message at the half. And Ryan was nice enough to break down a Missouri play in the chalkboard for us earlier this week with Jeremiah Tillman. Chalk clock winding down. And a putback by Jalen Tate. I'm happy to report that Ryan is doing great. He's just a normal fourth grader fighting through the cold in Columbia. Been sitting at home watching this game today. It's a great story and so happy that she's doing well and, and enjoying her life. It is interesting whenever you're playing for something greater than you and greater than what's going on that 94 feet, the kind of effort you can put forth and sometimes the results that yield from that effort. And it's been great to see the, the Tigers go out there and represent her and play so well in those games, uh, honoring her. Torrance Watson with the steal from Missouri. Arkansas a little bit sloppy. Tigers trailing. Extra pass, pass for Bugs. That was his first three-pointer of the season. He came in 0 for 10. And remember, Dallin, he passed up a three in the corner earlier this half. That's big time. They have a great extra pass and a big shot because they're going to need it with Pinson getting three fouls. You need these guards to continue to contribute, especially with Vanover. He's been playing lights out. First half, he was non-existent. He's got 10 points already now in five, six minutes in the second half. Pace picking up towards Watson's third three. This is what's getting fun. Missouri and Arkansas tied at 49. Hey, Over 
looking for an assist. Sills got under the rim. Watson having a big game. Bugs trying to flick it over Van over his head and it pulled home. Great job by Bugs. They weren't letting him come off the screen. Tate was what they call icing it, making him stay on one side of the court. So they changed the angle of the screen. He was able to get downhill and go right at man over. Good identification and execution by Bugs. Mitchell Smith commits his third person. Justin Smith took it right after him. Can I ask you a question? We've got three Smiths on, on the Missouri team. Everybody knows when we do those games, Mitchell, Mark, and Drew. Why do we use the full name? Why don't we just call them Mitchell, Mark, and Drew? We use last name solo. Can we use first name solo? Is that not appropriate? No, that's that's perfectly fine. Well, I'm going to start doing that. Making my own rules. Rules. Exactly. Then we got a Justin Smith at the free throw line on the other side. And Justin, good. There we go. by Tom Green at Indiana. Eventually left the Hoosiers, came to Arkansas. Eric Musselman called him the best offensive rebounder he's ever coached. You think that uh, includes Danny Fortson? Uh, it might include Danny Fortson. Who's a heck of a player. But Smith has been quiet this game. His activity is usually greater on, on both sides of the in terms of the boards, only has four rebounds. Which Smith? Justin, thank you. Well done, sir. <laughs> Big mismatch. Bugs and Bam. Wow. Give a repost. Or do that. Moody throws it in. First bucket this half for the freshman from Little Rock. We already mentioned he, he's a projected lottery pick, folks. A freshman. 6-5, shoot it, score off the bounce at all three levels. Starting to learn to understand how to play in space, play off teammates, without the ball in his hands. And he got it going right away to start this game, the foul trouble sideline him. If he gets it going again, he can easily change this game as he's done many times this year. Watch, watch got a chance in the loose ball. Moody comes up with it. And he's harassed into a jump ball. It'll be Missouri's ball when we return after this under 12 timeout. Arkansas holding on to a three-point lead. Five-hour energy. Across different professional leagues, and now in the collegiate world, he knows exactly what it takes. He's teaching guys how to play at the next level and what they're going to need to be able to do. Skills and the spacing and how to play the game the right way. Uh, so Moody's getting all the tutelage necessary, has all the tools necessary, and he'll be an outstanding, he'll be, he could have a very productive and long NBA career. Behind only Cameron Thomas of LSU and Kate Cunningham of Oklahoma State freshman score. Kick out an air ball and a push ahead. Desi Sills will run underneath it and get it to go. Kobe Brown stepped on the sideline and a Missouri turnover. Coming up at 6 Eastern over on ESPN and the app. We go to the ACC ninth rank Virginia playing host to North Carolina. Cavs have won 10 of their last 11. There are not many. It's, it, for folks that don't know, the ACC is down relative to their, their past greatness. And there aren't many quality wins to have in the ACC. And Carolina is right there as one of the last teams in the tournament right now. That would be a massive win. They have huge implica implications on the line, similar to this Arkansas game right now. They're a nine seed in Joe Lenardi's bracket. UNC is an 11 in his bracket. So Arkansas is in a better spot, but you got to win big games, especially on the road. They can change your whole resume and how the committee views. Debo Davis with the bucket. Arkansas has opened up a seven-point advantage, largest lead of the game for the Hogs, and trying to force a turnover. Brown gets it out of there. Skip to Pinson. Pinson able to cash in. He's got 14 now, thanks to four threes. A huge, huge possession right there. You're down seven. Pickett, I thought, was going to force a tough shot. He doesn't. He drives again and kicks it out to the better shooter, Pinson. 
This is the problem, though. Without Jeremiah Tillman, this team is really perimeter based right now. All dribble drive, kick action. They don't have the guy Tillman where you can have him high screen, roll in, into the post, roll for a lob. But this is a smart play. I thought Pickett might have shot it there, and then he gets it on the bounce. I thought, I wonder if he's going to take a bad shot. No, pivot. He knew exactly where he was going with it. Back out to Pinson, who nails his 4 3 of the game. But when you can't play through Tillman and can't make the game a little bit easier, it hurts them offensively. This is where it hurts them defensively. That's Tillman rotating over. He's going up, not necessarily to take a charge. That was a questionable charge call. He's going up there to block the shot. Yeah, that was a big call as well. Yeah. Jalen Williams commits his four. And I wouldn't say questionable. I think that's a bad call, period. Thank you. I know, honestly, I thought it was a block. I'm over here running my mouth, but I assumed it was a block. So Williams has four. Justin Smith has played out of foul trouble since the second half. But then Missouri turns it over again. Tigers with 14 turnovers in this game. And then Vanover. Look at Vanover in the post next to Pinson. That's 7-3 against 6-2. But this is where his body's got to get stronger. So Pinson's just walking him off the box. Heads up. Oh. Justin Smith from the Raptors. Arkansas by six. Corner, Drew Smith smashes down. Missouri hanging within a possession. Smith a dunk a moment ago, now looking for a dime. And Vanover kept it alive. Let's take a look at the Smith talk. Two angles. We finished with slam cam, my favorite. Love slam cam, but I like this too. Vanover was getting a lot of the attention. Brown lost sight of him. So Brown was trying to trying to cheat over there. Lose sight of Smith. Smith comes in and then slam cam. Angle number two. He throws it down to put Arkansas up. Hogs have been 12 of 17 in the second half. Rejected by Moody. And that's the problem, Tom. Missouri's built on their defense. That, that, that's where their, their core of their team is, is defending and then getting out in transition offensively and playing through each other. But this has been too easy. It's been too easy for them to get wherever they want to go. Great block by Moody, igniting a little bit of a break. But right now, Arkansas is getting to the spots on the floor and the places they want, shots they want, too comfortable. Again, similar to that old Miss game. There. See, look, how, Tate, how Tate's body's position, he's not letting him come off the screen, so they're turning it and getting him going downhill. Good read this time by Pinson. Brown swings it. Here's Drew. Got it. And we're tied at 60 on a Drew Smith three. The mark. He's a good three-point shooter, but in that possession on the road, the crowd, all 3,100 coming alive here. They just tied the game. There was time on the shot clock. He could have gotten that one any time. And then fouling on the other end, compounding the problem. That'll be the second on Jalen Tate. Deadlock at 67-40 to go in regulation at Como. Creighton right now. Was in there at number six. Ohio State big win today. Michigan and Baylor still on pauses. Michigan's pause of over, over three weeks will end on Sunday when they play Wisconsin. Eager to see how the Wolverines look back in action because they all those teams there can win a national championship. Here we're tied at 60. Missouri announced today as the number 16 overall seed. Contested three. Didn't make it to the rim and a shot clock violation. Devo Davis had the coverage that time on Pinson. Here's a look at what Missouri's resume looks like. 10th ranked team in the country. Pollsters like Missouri a whole lot more than the computers do. 43 in the BPI, 26 in the net. Lenardi's got him as a four. 
And there are only eight teams in the country with five or more Q1 wins, including the Tigers. And what's important about what you just said, yeah, that the, the numbers, the metrics don't love this team, but the NCAA selection committee put them in as the 16 overall seed. That is really what matters. That's tipping their hand. The committee's showing how they value Missouri's resume, which in turn shows how important this Arkansas game is for them, as they only have one quad one win right now, one for four, one and four, as we are four weeks in a day from Selection Sunday. You've got to bolster your resume. You only have so many opportunities. And let's not forget, you still could go on a pause at any point in time with COVID. So you, if you have a chance, you got to bank the chance when you can. Watson back in the game for Mitchell Smith. Joined us late, Missouri playing without Jeremiah Tillman. And Conzo Martin has used just about everybody he can off of his bench, including extra minutes for Parker Brown. Essentially now playing a stretch five for Mizzou. The key word you said there, Tom, is stretch. They don't really have anybody they can fit. But Tillman creates that presence where you got got those high screens and him diving in the lane. They got like six lob dunks against Arkansas in the first time. They got him rolling into the post. They dropped it into him. Uh, at times when you need to you can just have him post it up you throw it in They won't draw two, but he draws so much attention and opens things out on the kickout game Or sometimes he can win that one-on-one -on -one battle so without Tillman one of the most improved players one of the most dominant bigs in the country This is a this is a tough a impressive performance, but it really hurts them down the stretch not have that option The mismatch ends up costing Pinson a foul and it's his fourth with Missouri Switching on the screen Pinson got stuck with the 7-3 Vanover got underneath them trying to block him out they haven't paid Good the price much not. for this I think I think it's the right call you can't you, you know basically you can't keep a kind of undercutting the big also I think he kind of had him in jail with Vanover's head was basically under the rim so there's only so much he could do and when I have three I pretty much would have let that up you can't get that foul back with 643 I pretty would I would have tried to just stand my body up and be strong but not keep getting low and kind of undercutting into his legs They got to fix the clock. They're going to cut a couple seconds on the game clock and two more seconds on the shot clock. So Pinson to the bench with his fourth. And you got your two leading scores now. Pinson and or two of your three. Pinson and Tillman not but Tillman not available. Pinson with four fouls puts more pressure on this team again to step up in, in a critical game where it's important for them too. We know they're in the tournament. But they're playing for seeding. They're playing for an SEC championship. They're still in the mix. If they can win some, they got to rattle off a lot of wins. But sure. you, you know that win against Alabama kept them, you know, alive, if you will. But that lost Ole Miss really hurt them. But they've got to keep putting together some performances and coming off that Ole Miss loss. You want to get a win. Another whistle against Missouri. Arkansas once again able to get it inside. Parker Brown commits it. It's his first of the 6'8 sophomore. And that'll put Jalen Tate at the free throw line. One more coming for Tate. Can't miss action tonight. First, North Carolina at number nine, Virginia, square up on ESPN. Then KD, Kyrie, James Harden, and the Nets take on Steph and the Warriors at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on ABC. Later at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN Plus, pay-per-view. It's a UFC 258 main card. I've been known to dabble in the, uh, you know, the, 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 the lines, the, the lines, the spreads, if you will. Oh, uh, with, with, with some shekels. My question is, what is the over/under on the Gold State game against the Nets? It's got to be like 300. It's got, it's got to be just astronomical. I got to look at it. All of I don't, I don't mess with the NBA. 15 for Drew Smith. We're tied at 62. Hogs without a field goal the last three and a half minutes. They've been able to get inside on Missouri and parlay that into free throw trips. Numbers 245, by the way. Take the over, folks. We'll just take the over. Into the corner, Justin Smith. Used every bit of it to go. Again, he didn't play in their first matchup when they played down in, in Fayetteville. And they're one and four without Smith the lineup in SEC play, six and one with him. Difference maker offensively, defensively, energy on the boards. He's made some big plays at big times, especially in the second half. And Brown had to help on the drive. 
Scooby Smith had to help on the drive. Mark Smith, and then, oof, friendly roll. Shooter's touch. Third on Jalen Tate a moment ago. That hurts, but Smith is 3 for 16 in the three-point line coming into this game. And then makes that three at that time. So good. Bugs had made one all season. Misses again. Missouri already has a season high for threes in this game. 12 makes from deep. They previously made 11 in a bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S game against TCU. You're a big Gwen Stefani fan, huh? Hollaback. Bruce Smith comes out of there with it. Bugs to Brown. Line shot, the follow tip, to put a volleyball set to put it back in. It's beautiful. The, the libero uh, put that in there. Well done. Uh, that was created by Jalen Tate, though. Tate, for no reason, reached out the perimeter, allowing Bugs to get into the lane and causing a forced help. And Tate hung his head right away. He knew he made an unforced error on defense that led to two points. Bucket that time by Debo Davis. And then reach over the line. Should be a T. Did he reach over? Yeah, he did. Yeah. It's typically Looked like automatic. To me. Yeah. And Smith complained. He said, hey, what are we doing? But... If Brown is the libero, he should be wearing a different colored jersey. By Reversed in by Bugs. That's the only reason I know that term. It's because of the opposite colored jersey. I think I've been told that before. I probably asked 15 times. And finally, got logged into my brain. Libero. moody has been quiet here. Now he's got the rock with the spin. One point game late in Missouri. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college back. Golden, yep. outstanding young coach. They play a style that they're space you out. They're going to take threes. They're not going to be scared. They have played Gonzaga very tough. So that should be a competitive game. But when Gonzaga turns it up late, really nobody in that conference has been able to hang with them. They've been sensational in the second half in WCC games this season. The freshman Moody. A double double against Missouri first matchup. Knocks down both free throws. Arkansas enjoying a three point advantage now. Again, I mentioned that Jeremiah Tillman not playing in this game. This is where it's critical. Again, you'd want to have him on the floor and play through him at times. Not here. Everything's very perimeter oriented. That man, Xavier Pinson or, or Drew Smith, number 12, are going to have to be the ones that key the offense of the dribble driver or, or some screening action. Smith tried to work it into Mark Smith, and a Missouri turnover ends up in Vanover's hands. Missouri's great, been great close games. 5 0 oh this season in games is out of a five or less. Great recognition by Justin Smith. He got back up, but he recovered and got a piece of that ball to force a turnover and take away what would, would have been a layup. Strong move by Vanover going over the 6 5 Watson. Finally able to take advantage of a mismatch. They're switching all these screens. Vanover's able to get on the block and make the pay. Pinson from straight away. He's made big shots at big times. And that three earlier in the corner, and when there's an eight point game, they get it to four, they get it to five, he comes right back again. That's a better stepping up. A 7 3 on 6 5. See if Vanover goes inside. They set Arkansas with a three. Loose ball. It'll stay this direction for the Hawks. Knocked out of bounds by Pinson, apparently. Taking a look as Joe Lindsay's all over the call that now down there right off Pinson's hand. He didn't argue, he knew right away. Iso for Moody. To Vanover, but they'll wave it off. An offensive foul on the freshman. It's the third on Moody. Take two off the board. And Missouri down two with the ball. Great recognition by Mark Smith to slide over there and take it. He knew they were isolating. That's his help. On the weak side, he gets over there early, takes the charge. Big play. We've had eight ties and four lead changes in this one. 
Fight for the rebound. Marksman had it. Missouri will retain possession with 20 seconds on the shot clock. If Missouri wins this game, remember that transition sequence. He takes a charge on one end. He's one on three down there. He just outworks, out jumps, and keeps the ball alive for the Tigers. That is a huge four point swing. Could be even more. Missouri not yet in the bonus. Here's Watson. Too strong. Another board for Mark Smith. Try to pump fake Van over, spun around him. And Moody comes out of there with it. What an effort by him. We're talking about no Jeremiah Tillman. Well, Smith, Mark Smith picking it up for you, getting offensive rebounds. Made a great move inside, but couldn't finish. Now he's got the mismatch with Van over. See if they try to get him a touch inside. Big 7-3 center. Van over the assist. Mm -hmm. Finding Justin Smith, who's got 13 now. Hanover is so skilled, and Smith, as we mentioned, did not play in the first game. Recognizes his man, turned his head. Mitchell Smith, he dives right down the middle. Great interior pass, four-point lead for the Hawks. They've only committed five at this point. Missouri not yet in the bonus. Pinson, the biggest threat on the offensive side for Missouri, waiting in the lane. He's guarded by Davis. Drew Smith gets fouled. That's Jalen Tate. It's his fourth. But that's fine. I mean, right there, you're not. That's not sending him to the line. He's being aggressive. You may not want to give it at that point in time. But right. he wasn't seeding ground. Um, but it doesn't hurt you as bad as normal. In most games, especially at the collegiate level, that's we're usually in the one-on-one -on -one right now. So it's not going to hurt. Here's Brown. Try to bring Pinson off a down screen. Let's see if they do it again. Smith bounce to the corner. Here's Mark Smith with an air ball. Mitchell Smith rolls it home. Two point game. That was a great kick out and one of the worst misses I've seen in a while. But Mitchell Smith was there to pick up his fellow Smith Mark and a huge putback. Let's see if Moses Moody gets a touch coming off the screen. Here he comes. Tate playing with four fouls. Gets to the free throw line. Shot clock at seven. Quick move. Davis to the baseline. This ball, Missouri's got it now. Two 17 seconds. Here's Drew Smith into the front court. He'll push. Dive. Brown got it. And we're tied at 73. Arkansas the other way. Seven now. Davis spins. Never gave it up. Blocked by Brown. One second left, the heave is short, and we got three baskets. Tenth ranked team in the country having to come from behind to get the extra period. Something to note, foul trouble is a factor in this game. For Missouri right now, Pinson, Xavier Pinson won their leading scorer and best player on the court right now. Has four fouls, along with Mitchell Smith, number five, got four fouls. Two for two Hogs players, Tate. And Williams also four fouls as well, but I think it's more critical for the Missouri guys. They really don't want to play with Pinson without Pinson in the team. Moody feeds Smith, and that'll be a blocking foul on Mitchell Smith. You just mentioned the foul trouble. That's the fourth on Missouri's bid. You see this ball screen action here. They've been switching a lot of this. They get caught up there. Brown keeps going with them, which forces the late rotation by. Mitchell Smith, he was absolutely still in the restricted area. Restricted area. He wasn't set anyway. That is the right call on the baseline and one for Justin Smith. So Mitchell Smith will come to break uh, to the bench for a moment. Justin, the Indiana transfer at the free throw line, graduated in three years, working on his master's in operations management. Now, we're now told that's the fifth on Mitchell Smith. So he's done. And that changes everything for Missouri. So they're definitely smaller now. Watson comes in zero. He's a bit of a shooter. He wants to come and hunt threes, but Brown is their one kind of interior presence up on the top of the key set of the screen right now. Takes a tack call. It's right, though. That's on Devo Davis. His first.
For those of you tuning in to see number one Gonzaga playing against San Francisco, that game will start on ESPNU. In just about one minute, we find him to suck right here for the end of this one. Missouri and Arkansas in overtime. Xavier Pinson with a big three late. And Missouri now in the bonus, and he's got another free throw coming. Junior from Chicago out of Simeon Academy. Produced some legends. Including Derek Rose. Freshman Moody, third best scoring freshman in the country, will bring it up for Arkansas. I'd like to see the ball more in his hands. It wasn't in his hands a lot late as much as I think it should have been. He doesn't force the game. That's part of what I like about it. But at times, he's going to have to take him, take him by the scruff of his neck. And an Arkansas turnover. Tigers with a chance to get the lead. Pinch him back to Watson. Brown working on the 7 3 Vanover. Got a ball fake and a foul. And a smart play by Parker Brown. It was a smart play to make the fake. At first, I thought he could have done a better job to just give a head fake and try to go up. But once he got in this position, he had nowhere to go. Good head fake, and Vanover's got to be smarter. He's 7'3", he's got great length. you got to stay on your feet, stay in your plane of verticality. And if he makes that shot over you, fading away, you'll live with that. But you don't want to jump into him and bail him out. Don't jump until he jumps. Brown misses them both. Remain tied at 75. Van over second to go with two blocks in this game. Back to the 7 3 center who can stroke it, but that one is off the mark. And it goes off of Pinson's foot and rolls out of bounds. Rebounding, too. They're going to have their guards have to crash. They've got a collective rebound without Mitchell Smith or Tillman in this game. Lob. Justin Smith again. Second time he's thrown down one of those since the half. That makes coaches. It's been a, it's been a really well-played second half in particular. And you mentioned how many threes they've taken. That's over 50%. In the season, they're only shooting 36% of their field goal attempts are threes. So without Tillman, they have relied more on threes, but guys have stepped up. They've still played a lot of times inside out. The ball's got into the paint, off the bounce, and then they're kicking out like this. And guys sometimes are able to knock down that shot. Pinson around Brown's screen. Try to draw some contact, and he does! A chance for a three-point play. His use of his body and change of pace here is so smart. He goes over the screen, they keep changing the angle, he waits, he beats that body contact, which thinks Vanover thinks, okay, he's back in the play, but he's not. He's got him in jail, he's got him behind him. Vanover seeds ground, he's able then to explode and finish at the rim. That's understanding the spacing of the court, that's understanding how to use your body and the change of pace and the ability to finish by Pinson. Outstanding. Missouri with the lead, under three to go. Meanwhile, number one, Gonzaga leads San Francisco 4 nothing. Two minutes into that one, it's on ESPNU. We'll get you there as soon as this finishes in overtime. Deflected by Watson. He's taking advantage of the extra playing time tonight. It's high ball speed. It's kind of become their offense. Benson behind Brown. And a buff and a foul from Devontae Davis. It's his second. Remember last two the last time these team teams played, Missouri won. Eric Musselman got two technicals late in the game. You got an early shower. Um, he does not like that call, but unfortunately, that there was a right call. There's a lot of body contact there. And that is a double bonus situation. So there'll be another shot if Pinson missed the first. It was a simple message. Let the players decide. Pinson mm -hmm. fourth in the league, a free throw percentage coming in. Knocks down the second. 
It's only by two. Tied 11 times. We've had five lead changes in this one. Trying to get a touch with Justin Smith inside. He's really good at facing up. He gives it up. Debo Davis down the lane. Rebounded by Tate. And got a foul on Missouri. Great activity by Jalen Tate right there. Smith faces up. Good flash by, Dave, uh, by Davis. Doesn't finish, but Tate, the same guy that got the offensive rebound in a game they beat in one against Kentucky earlier in the week. Came in, got an offensive rebound, got fouled, went to the line, made both free throws in the game they won by one. Just making plays when there's really nothing there. We've got a solid stat line today. See if he can step up and knock down big free throws again. Knock this thing up. First miss from the line tonight for Tate. Arkansas 13 of 16 at the strike. Vanover's got three. He's going to come to the bench for at least a moment for Arkansas to see how long he stays there. Tate hits a second. Smaller lineup for both teams. Justin Smith matched up with Parker Brown. Better defensive lineup. Vanover can be a little bit of, he's struggled a little bit this pack, pick and roll action. Now they're just switching. Vincent gets downhill. Rebounded by the Hogs. Chance for Arkansas to take the lead with 90 seconds in overtime. Tate picked up by Brown. Smith in the inside. And then a foul on the wing on Drew Smith, his second. You never want to fault the guy for playing hard, but you got to play smart. There's no reason to reach there. You're up a point. Their shot clock is dwindling. He's got to catch it in the corner with nowhere to go. You're going to be right in front of him. Granted, he's a great player. But when you reach and miss, and then you foul, you've now given them an opportunity to score that they didn't earn. But he fifth in the league at 81% from the free throw line. He's a perfect three for three in this one. This to give the Hawks the lead. Got it. Sixth lead change in this one. I do love this adjustment going small. You saw them switch the pick and roll, which essentially has become their offense. This pick where they were able to get downhill, kind of a flat ball screen. Now they're just switching it and keeping you in front, making you work. I like this by Eric Mumford. Drew Smith trying to get Justin in the air. Nothing doing. Here's Mark Smith with the drive. And the whistle. It's the fourth on Moody. Less than a minute to go in overtime. A lot on the lines from both of these teams. Missouri, the 10th ranked team in the country, one of the top four seeds according to the committee today. Trying to avoid its second consecutive loss. Eric Musselman's team is looking for a resume defining win on the road. This would be their signature win. And this is a really big play, not just with the free throw, but again, Moody getting his fourth foul. They're taking a look. And they switch that ball screen, a good cutoff defensively. See if Moody's straight up. It's tough. He might have got his elbow was a little bit not vertical. That's a tough call, no doubt about it. And now Mark Smith can give Missouri the lead. Knocks it down. Mark Smith has made key plays. He's got key rebounds, key loose balls. There he gets knocks down free throws. He's done so many little things to put them in this position. Tate tied up. Lobs it up front. Sills. They got 10 on the clock now. Moody. Inside and an easy bucket on the look to Davis. Cut by Davis. Ball watching. Ticket got cut. Ball watching. He got it impulsively in those pick and roll situations. They couldn't switch with him and he was getting beaten mismatches. And now they've switched. They, they go smaller for Justin Smith and this is a very good defensive lineup. There aren't many mismatches to be had. But if you're going to set the ball screen, you got to pick it whoever you want to go at. I would go probably one of the freshmen. Davis most likely who's on the ball right now. Arkansas only one quad one win on the season. This would be huge for the Hogs to win on the road. Hey! Drive blocked at the rim, but we get a foul. And they'll call it goaltending and count it. 
And they'll say Jalen Tate took it off after it came off the backboard. Let's take a look. Great play design as they cleared out the backside, lifted everybody up. Ooh, that's clean. Now they can they will review it this now. Review. If Missouri's run it before, Arkansas will be prepared for it. Guaranteed. Here's Brown outside. Quick move, Drew Smith. A drive and a kick. Brown finds it and loses it. Arkansas grabs it with 13.6 remaining. And Drew Smith again, just a rip. Green in 1994. One more coming for Moody. Makes this one, he makes it a three point advantage. 81% free throw shooter. He looks comfortable and confident. The young man doesn't mind. Big, big free throws in this game. Watson is in. Another shooter on the floor for Mizzou. Don't need 13 three. seconds go. Two. Pinson with 10. Pinson with 8. And now 5. Contested threes in air ball. And a foul on Brown to try and kick it out. And Arkansas will have a chance to seal this. The big difference in this game was the change to going small for Arkansas, so the pick and roll didn't really pick, pick and roll didn't work as much anymore. They were switching everything. No ball screen came. Pinson was stuck on a corner and a wing. Never even looked like he was going to go to the basket. That's not the shot you won in that situation. But credit Arkansas for defending well and then boxing out well to get the uh, over the back ball. It'll be academic now. Four-point advantage as Judson Smith has another free throw coming. Tigers haven't made a field goal in the last 248. Smith nails them both. Arkansas evens the season series with Missouri. The Razorbacks get a huge resume-defining win. Not